Hi everyone, it's Rio Clouting. In today's session, we'll be taking a look at Microsoft SharePoint Advanced Management and its wider capabilities. First off, we need to access the Microsoft 365 Admin Center via admin.microsoft.com. Then on the left-hand service pane where we see users, we want to select active users and we want to locate the user account we'll be signing in with and make sure it has the relevant license assigned to the given user profile. For my demo, I'll be using my user profile, funny enough called Rio Hindle. Once I've found or once you've located your user profile, you want to make sure that you've got the SharePoint Advanced Management Plan 1 SKU assigned to your given user account. It may take some time for the capabilities to reflect in the given admin console. Therefore, my advice would be to sign out and sign back in of the given admin console once you've assigned the license to your account. On the left hand service pane, we want to scroll down to where we see admin centers. And this will present us a list of all the different admin centers, including Exchange, Entry ID, SharePoint. In today's video, we're focusing on the SharePoint admin console. With assigning the license to my account, it's, it's only going to enhance the capabilities and enhance the options within the SharePoint Admin Console. We're not deprecating any of the existing functionality, i.e. we can still manage active sites, we can still amend uh, the all up um, sharing policies and role based access control, we can make use of the reporting capabilities, it only improves the capabilities we can um, deliver uh, for our organisation. You'll see an option for Advanced Management Pro, and this will list what's included within the given Advanced Management Plan 1 SKU. If you don't already have uh, the SKU listed, then there will be an option for a 30 day free trial, which you can make use of and you can follow along in today's demonstration. However, let's get back to what's included within the Advanced Management SKU pack. We've got site level access restrictions, site lifecycle management. We can restrict OneDrive access restriction across the organization to a particular subset of groups. We can have a look at the change history. So we've got some auditing there um, from an administration perspective. Um, and in today's video, we're going to be running through a few of these different capabilities. So first off, let's start off with site lifecycle management, the ability to generate reports on inactive sites across our organization. So if I was on the left hand side, scroll to policies and select lifecycle management, it will give me the ability to create a policy. And what this will, what this will give me is the ability to create a policy to generate reports on all the inactive sites within my given organization. Um, it also allow me to send monthly emails to site owners or site admins and act on sites that are inactive more than three months. So if I was to select next, here's the policy scope so I can configure how long after the last activity should a site be uh, considered inactive. I've got options from a month to six months. What type of site should be checked for inactivity? And there's a few site templates here, including communication sites, classic sites, sites without Teams connected, Teams sites with a Microsoft 365 groups. Of course, as we know, any Teams we create, any Microsoft 365 collaboration site will create a SharePoint site um, from the back end. Therefore, going through this kind of site lifecycle management deposition review is very handy. It's kind of conducting an access review on our behalf and at least notifying us of the given um, inactive, inactive sites. So we can select um, or maybe for this example communication site and we can filter by site creation source. This would be PowerShell through the SharePoint Admin Center, maybe utilizing the, um, the SharePoint uh, PowerShell module to create the given sites, albeit you can go ahead and filter the sites by creation source. We also have options to filter by sensitivity labels. So if we've deployed the likes of information protection through Microsoft Purview and we've assigned those given uh, sites a label, i.e. maybe highly confidential, internal, public, whatever it may be, uh, we can filter. And we've also got an option to whitelist and exclude uh, specific sites. Maybe uh, you want to exclude uh, your HR site or your payroll site because you know they're actively used on a daily basis. Then you can do so by just um, uh, copying and pasting the site URL. Once we've um, deciphered what we want to configure, 
we can select next and we can give the policy a name we can also set the policy mode i.e simulation or active so simulation mode um, so if you select simulation mode it will be in simulation for 90 days and after such time it will turn over to active however if we don't want to give it this the 90 day um, grace period or buffer period we could just set it to active straight away it acts in the same principle as if you were creating a conditional access policy and put putting it in or placing it in report only mode for example however we could just select active so that's that's the option for site lifecycle management if i was to go back to advanced management pro we've also got options for site level access restrictions the ability to control access to active sites for global administrators or sharepoint administrators and if we're using communication sites we can actually specify particular microsoft 365 security groups here's the option so you can see it from a site level being able to append that restricted site access and that's it from an org wide level being able to enable it from an org wide um, settings uh, perspective so if we go ahead and uh, conduct that so if we were to go to access control under policies and where we see site level access restriction pro we can um, make sure that that's one of the advanced management capabilities we can select this and it's just a tick box exercise this saying lets you and other global sharepoint administrators restrict access to sites for sites connected to a group or team you can restrict access to only the group or team owners and members for communication sites which is key here you can restrict access to only the groups you specify so if i was to press allow access restriction from an all up perspective and i was to navigate to active sites in my site list you can see i've got a communication site here and if i was to select communication site and navigate to the settings pane you can see the option for restricted site access now um pro and if i was to hover over the policy tip restrict access to only the groups you specify i can select edit and i can select the tip box for restrict sharepoint site access to only users and specified groups and add those given security groups so i can decipher who actually has access to those given sites from an administration perspective albeit if it's not a communication site i won't have the option to specify a security group um, i would only have an option to um, limit it to global administrators or sharepoint administrators okay so if i was to come out of here and back to the advanced management capabilities we looked at site lifecycle management that that whole process of being able to go through a deposition review site level access restriction being able to restrict given sharepoint uh, sites to either global administrators sharepoint administrators or scope of security groups if it's a communication site we also have the option to block download uh, block downloads for both internal and external users within a given SharePoint site. There's no UI for this at this point in time. It is very much um, PowerShell orientated. But if I was to click on click on the Microsoft documentation, it's very straightforward. You connect to the to, to the SharePoint Online Management shell. Um, and you run the set hyphen SPO site identity site URL and then block download policy true. And of course, you can configure that to your liking. But that restricts the ability for both internal and external users from downloading uh, particular uh, content or files from your given document libraries. So that's quite useful. Um, if I was to come out of here, uh, we've also got an option for change history, uh, which is the ability to report on administration changes across your um, your, your SharePoint sites. Um, so if I was to click into change, change history, you can see create and download detailed CSV reports of site actions or organizational settings changed by global administrators, SharePoint admins and site admins within the last 180 days. So if I was to go to change history, which resides under reports change history, I can create a report and I can break this down from a, a, an individual site perspective or all up org perspective. And it's for you to make your own decision on what you want to report on. If I was to do all up org and select next, I can give it a report name. I can decipher the, the, the time frames in which I want to report on and I can select changes made by who global administrators and SharePoint admins or specific global administra administrators or SharePoint admins within my given organization. So a lot of flexibility there. I think another keynote here is when you go ahead and generate the report, it can take some time for the report to provide its output. Um, so, d d you know, don't be alarmed if it doesn't generate it straight away. So that's change history. So if I was to go back to advanced management, we went through block downloads, change history. We've also got conditional access policies for SharePoint and OneDrive. I'm not going to show this in action. Uh, 
but with the with advanced management um, capabilities, we can. I think in Microsoft's example, if I was to go onto the Microsoft documentation, for any external users accessing any of the SharePoint sites within the given Microsoft organization or tenant, they've introduced the ability to um, require like T's and C's to be accepted uh, before they're actually provided access to the given SharePoint site. So that's Microsoft's example. But this is in the use case of uh, being able to use authentication context based on uh, given actions within the given um, organization. And of course, you can associate that, associate that with conditional access to apply access controls amongst your SharePoint sites, albeit if that be required multi-factor authentication or um, uh, applicable locations you need to sign in from or session persistency, anything around those lines. But in Microsoft use case, um, they associated authentication context with a uh, given terms of use. So any external users accessing those given SharePoint admin sites had to go through the terms of use before they can actually actually access the, the given um, information and uh, details within the given site. So that's SharePoint. I'm not going to go into too much into conditional access. That was just a bit of a highlight. You can make use of conditional access policies with that. We've also got data access governance reports under where we see change history. Um, this is really useful, especially when we want to see all the, the given sharer links amongst our sites and all up. So i.e. identify potential oversharing by monitoring sites where you just created new sharing links in SharePoint. Um, for, if we didn't have the advanced management SKU, you know, that would be a one-to-one -one basis where we'd have to go through each and every site, check for the sharing links and uh, put it into some sort of report manually. With the data access governance reports, it's able to compile that report for you and tell you, okay, you may have 50 sites. These are the given sharing links amongst those sites, i.e. Sh shared externally, shared internally, all that lovely stuff. We can also see the sensitivity labels applied to given files within document libraries within your SharePoint sites, i.e. if that is highly confidential, internal, public, um, whatever it may be. And um, you can see that in terms of sensitivity labels and content shared with everyone except external users. And once more, you can view these reports. These will generate and these can take some time. Um, once this loads, you'll see a breakdown of three different um, uh, reports you can create for sharing links, anyone links, people in your organizational links and specific people links shared externally. OK, so if I was to go back to advanced management, that's the governance reports. We can set default sensitivity labels for document libraries. OK, uh, we can set that. So if I was to go into active sites again and go to my communication site where we see settings, you can actually set, see sensitivity labels. So we can apply sensitivity labels to the site level rather than the, the file level itself. So it gives us that ability. Um, OneDrive access restrictions. Um, yes, we can restrict OneDrive uh, access, OneDrive use, um, OneDrive visibility to, to, to people we scope. So if I was to go to the OneDrive access restriction from the all up pane, we can restrict access uh, to uh, only users in specified security groups, and I can specify those uh, security groups here. So use this setting to allow only users in specific security groups to access OneDrive content. You can add up to 10 security groups. Users not in the security group will lose access to all OneDrive content for the time being. And I think last but not least is uh, recent actions. Um, so yeah, there will be a, a service pane in, in the active sites for re recent actions amongst the given sites you select. So you can see if, if anyone's made amendments to the permission sets, if anyone's uploaded any new files, anyone's deleted any files, anyone's applied a sensitivity label, for example, whole load of auditing and activity you can run through uh, from a site, uh, site level perspective. Um, but yeah, that was it for the SharePoint Advanced Management SKU. I thought I'd just demystify some of the queries I've had around SharePoint Advanced Management. Um, it's not my area of go-to, uh, by all means. Um, you know me, security, Entra is, is one of my go-to solutions. But of course, there's a real uplift of Copilot for Microsoft 365 at the moment, and the whole governance piece um, is not a Copilot project. It's more of a data strategy project. Therefore, opting into the Advanced Management SKU really does enhance that whole governance piece and uh, security piece. So I thought I'd just highlight from that perspective. But any questions, please do let me know. Thank you very much.